this video is created by Jagrat Creation. It is on underwriting of shares and debentures. I wish to solve one sum here before you. Just observe the sum on the screen. Delta Limited issued 25 lakh equity shares of rupees 10 each at par. 7 lakh shares were issued to the promoters and the balance were offered to the public. Remember, no underwriting commission can ever be paid for the shares issued to promoters. So, no underwriting commission can be paid on this 7 lakh shares. Remaining shares are issued to public on which underwriting commission could be paid as per the underwriting agreement and according to the provisions of company law. And the balance offered to the public was underwritten by three underwriters P, Q and R in the ratio of 2 is to 3 is to 4 with, with firm underwriting 50,000, 60,000, 70,000 with firm underwriting implies that you are required to give a credit for firm underwriting for while determining the net liability of the underwriters. So the word with 50,000, 60,000, 70,000 shares respectively. So we are going to give a credit of firm underwriting to the uh, specific underwriters. Total subscription was received, was received for 13,88,000 shares. Out of 25 lakhs, 7 lakhs are the shares given to promoters. So remaining are 18 lakh shares. Out of 18 lakh shares, 13,88,000 applications are received. Shares including mark application excluding firm underwriting marked applications are as follows this application number of application received which includes this marked application but other than firm application unmarked and surplus application are to be distributed in the pro in proportion of gross liability asset and the liability of each underwriter now let us determine the liability of each underwriter for that i prepare this working note now Total issue 25 lakhs. Shares issued to promoter 7 lakhs. Issue to public under return 18 lakhs. The liability taken in the ratio of 2 is to 3 is to 4. So gross liability distributed in the ratio of 2 is to 3 is to 4. So 18 lakhs into 2 by 9. 18 lakhs into 3 by 9. This is the gross liability of Q. 18 lakhs into 4 by 9, 8 lakhs is the liability of R. So this is the gross liability that I have recorded. So this is the commitment that they have made under underwriting agreement. Because of their efforts, the number of applications received by the company is known as marked application because their marking is found on those applications and those marked applications are given credit to these underwriters against their gross liability. So marked applications will be deducted therefrom. Now, whatever the unmarked applications are there, they are to be distributed amongst underwriters in the proportion of gross liability, liability because you are told like that. So how much are the unmarked applications? Total applications received are 13,88,000. Marked applications are 11 lakhs. So, I'll deduct marked applications, 11 lakhs. So, unmarked applications are 2,88,000. These 2,88,000 applications will be distributed in the proportion of 2 is to 3 is to 4, that is gross liability. And you are told that unmarked applications are to be distributed in the proportion of gross liability. So, this 2 lakh 88,000 distributed in the proportion of 2 is to 3 is to 4. So 2 lakh 88,000 into 2 by 9. 2 lakh 88,000 into 3 by 9. 2 lakh 88,000 into 4 by 9. This is how credit for unmarked application given in proportion of gross liability. Now, all these 13 lakh 88,000 are the applications other than firm application. And we are required to give a credit of this firm application. So if I give a credit of firm application to each underwriter P, Q and R, P has committed to purchase 
50,000 shares minimum firm. His liability is 36,000. So he is going to purchase surplus more than its liability. How much? 14,000 shares. And that surplus will be distributed between Q and R. Here 154 minus 60. So this is the firm application. So here in case of P, he is going to purchase more than his liability. His liability is 36,000 shares. He is going to purchase 50,000 shares because of firm, firm agreement. <clears throat> so 14,000 shares. They are just, they are the surplus that P is going to purchase that will be distributed between Q and R in the proportion of 3 is to 4. So 14,000 distributed in the ratio of 3 is to 4. So 14,000 into 3 by 7 and 4 by 7. This is the credit given to Q because of surplus purchase of P. This is the credit given to R because of surplus purchase of P. So after this, you can have the liability of underwriters for the applications not received from the public. Now, how many applications are not received from the public? Total applications, 18 lakhs. Minus application received 13 lakh 88,000. Minus firm. They are the application for with liability worked out to be 88 plus 1, 2 lakh 32,000. To this liability, you are required to add firm. So firm, this is a 50,000 firm purchase of P is added. Firm purchase of Q and R is added. So you will get the total net liability, total liability of the underwriters, including firm. Now every share is of rupees 10 each. So P is supposed to pay 50,000 into 10, 5 lakhs. Here 14 lakh 80,000 and here 20 lakh 40,000. This is the amount that these underwriters are supposed to pay, supposed to pay to the company. But from that, a credit will be given for underwriting commission. So from this liability, underwriting commission will be deducted and the remaining amount is payable to the company. This is how the liability in terms of rupees is being worked out. This is how I have worked out the liability of each underwriter. Notice that unmarked applications are distributed in proportion of gross liability. Marked applications are straightway deducted from gross liability. Credit to each underwriter is given for firm applications. In light of that, liability of each underwriter is being worked out. I feel that you have followed all these things. Thanks to all.